Let's have a look now at inserting some standalone symbols in a circuit using AutoCAD Electrical. Now, as usual, I have a new project set up, 08 Schematics, right there. And you'll notice there aren't any drawings associated with it. I have our IEC standalone symbols drawing open. We're using the IEC standard, which is the European metric standard. So as usual, what we need to do is add the active drawing. So we click on the project, we right click and add the active drawing. Yes, we apply the project default values as before. You'll notice in this case, I've preset the sheet number for you. It's 001 IEC standalone symbols drawing. So the sheet number in the project is 001. Let's have a look now at our drawing. We're going to zoom in a little bit first and see what we've got. Let's have a look. We have some information here. As you can see, there's a circuit and some switches and things already in place. And what we're going to do is look at this part of the circuit right here. Now, the reason we're looking here, obviously, it's empty. All we've got is wiring right now. We've got a wiring ladder in place, but no symbols in place. So we go up to the schematic tab on the ribbon. And what we do is we go to the icon menu. Now, this is on your insert components panel on the schematic tab. So there's our icon menu, and we want this one here, icon menu. And when we click on that, you'll see because we're using an IEC drawing, we've got IEC schematic symbols. We're going to go to push buttons, and we want a push button, momentary, that one there. So we're going to click, and that'll bring in an AutoCAD block for that push button. Now I'm going to place that there. Now you'll notice snap is on. So can you see I'm sort of snapping around and it's a bit jerky? So that means I can line that in exactly along that wiring ladder there. So I just get it to the middle and click. I don't even need object snap on for that. Now when I click, obviously the insert edit component screen comes up. We're going to add some information this time. We're going to start using this dialog box as it should be used. So we're going to go into the description and we're going to put in motor. Now don't worry about uppercase or lowercase here because it'll update as soon as I tab to the next field. You can see there, when I put in start and tab again, it already capitalizes it for me, so I don't need to worry about that. Now, something I haven't mentioned before, when you put a component into your drawing, if you don't put any catalog data in, what will happen is it won't go into the bill of materials. So you may need to update and edit some of your previous components. However, there's a lovely tool here, Lookup. If I click on Lookup now, it goes and looks in the catalog for me, the default catalog. And as you can see now, I've got the option of various push buttons here. I'm going to go for this one here. It's going to be red. It's got one setting there. And I'm going to click on OK. That'll put that information in there. Now, item number. You need to put an item number in to make sure that it goes in the bill of materials. I'm going to put in 50. That should hopefully make sure that it doesn't clash with any other items in the drawing or in the project. So if I click on OK now, it updates, and there's my information. So there's my motor start push button. It's all in place. There's the push button there. There's the information. Now I can edit this component at any time if I want to. I can go here and click on Edit and pick the component, cable, or location to edit. Might be a good time now to switch snap off down here on the status bar. If I click there, there's the information. I can go in and edit it at any time, not a problem. Once I've edited that information, I can then click on OK. Job done. So there's our drawing, there's our component added. Now that's a standalone symbol in this particular case, inserted into our electrical drawing in AutoCAD Electrical. As we move along now in our AutoCAD electrical project, we're going to look at parent and child relationships between our symbols on our schematic drawings. So what I've already done is I've loaded up drawing 002 IEC parent symbols drawing, and that is our current drawing. You can see that at the top of the screen there. What I've also done is set up an 003 drawing, which is our power one phase drawing. Now, what we're going to do is set up symbols, parent-child symbols, between the two drawings that have a relationship. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our parent component symbol on our schematic. 
So let's look at that now. I've already placed our push button here, our motor start push button. I'm going to pan and zoom in on this part of the wiring there. So there's our ladder, and it's this wiring here that I'm going to go for. Now, it's a good idea at this point to switch your snap on. That way, when you place the components, you can snap very easily to the grid. You could also use object snap if you wanted to, to use things like endpoint, midpoint, and so on. I'm going to go to the schematic tab on the ribbon and the insert components panel. Icon menu here. Now, from the previous drawing, it's remembered that we went to icon menu first, so I've only got to click on the icon. And we're still with IEC, the European metric standard. And I'm going to relays and contacts here. And I want a relay coil, that one there. And as you can see, because I've got snap on, it's jerking around, so I can line that in nice and neatly. Can you see I'm lining it in with the one on the left there? And I click once and that's placed, and up comes insert and edit component. Now, the nice thing is with projects, you can set up default descriptions. Now, the default description I want in this case, I can go and find by clicking on the default button, and I want system enabled. And you'll notice there's a little line in between the two. When I click on OK, that little line breaks it into two lines in my description. Very, very useful. Now, we've got that placed. That's excellent. We're happy with that. What we need to do now is go to the lookup, and I'm going to use a particular relay coil that has two NO, normally open contacts. So I'm going to go for that one there. I could go for that one there. Now, bear in mind this is purely for training purposes. I'm not actually building a real circuit here. So either of those would work. Depends on your project specifications, obviously, on which type you would use. But you basically need two normally open contacts in this case for the parent child relationship to work. I'm going to use that one there. I'm going to click on OK. And that places the information in the catalog data there for me. So once I've got to that point, what I can do is I can just click on OK. And that is now in place. As you can see, there's my relay coil. There's K1, K2, which are my two normally open contacts. And there's the system enabled description right there. So everything's come in place. It's all ready to go. What I've got to start thinking about now, though, is the child relationship and how I get that to work and link to my power one phase drawing right here. Let's now look at building up our relationship between our parent and child components on our schematic drawing in AutoCAD Electrical. We've already placed our relay coil down here. We placed our push button here. Now it's the relay coil we're going to use for the parent child relationship. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the schematic tab on the ribbon, go to the icon menu, just as if I was going to place another relay. So I'm going to relay contacts like that, and I'm going to select the same relay normally open contact there, that one there. Now, a relay contact is obviously different to the relay coil itself, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to click a point over here. Notice I've got snap on, so I can snap nice and easily to the rungs of the wiring ladder there. So I click, and it updates, and the insert edit child component comes in. So slightly different dialog box this time. But what we've got to do is build up the parent-sibling relationship using this button here. So I'm going to click on parent-sibling and select the component that relates to that relationship, which is going to be down here, my relay coil. I've put a relay contact in. This is my relay coil. When I click there, can you see that the information comes in? So I've got SS. EX is the location, component tag is KF2, and there's my system-enabled description information. Now, you'll notice there's some cross-referencing and some pins there. You don't need to worry about that, but we've got the information in place. So what I can do now is I can click on OK, and that inserts my contact here. Now, if you notice, look, if I zoom in, there's my contact, KF2, system-enabled. If I zoom in on the relay coil, KF2, system enabled. So you can see that there's a relationship there already. Now what I would do at this point is make sure that you save the drawing. Now I'm going to save it 
later on. I'm not going to do it now. I'll do all of that so it's all saved in the work files for you. The next step now is to go into the drawing that we need to build up the parent-child relationship with. So I'm now going to open up this one, IEC Power One Phase Drawing. Now the good thing is it's already in the project, so I can just double click on it and it'll open like that. No problem at all. I'm going to zoom in here just above the error buzzer. Can you see that there? You've got error light and error buzzer, and I'm going to be using this wire here. Now we're going to go into the relay tools again. So we're going to insert another relay and we're going to insert relay contacts and we're going to insert another relay normally open contact here. And I'm going to place that just there like that. And I'm going to click and pick the point. And you've got the information there now. So you can see that's component tag KF. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on project, to open the project list. So I've got installation, location, component tag. I can click on any of these project buttons. So if I go for installation, for example, and it's the SS family I want, so I OK that. Project here again, and you can see there EX. So location, component tag, KF. And I need to find KF2. So there's my KF2 there. So SS, EX. KF2, system enabled, and I OK that. So that puts that information in. There's my component tag, KF2. So that is now all in place. And what I'll do now is I'll click on OK. It updates the project for me, and that information is now linked in there. Can you see? So I've got system enabled. If I zoom in, can you see there? SS, EX, KF2. So what I'll do now, if I go back to parent symbols, what you'll find here, so if you look down here now, can you see it's been updated? The information's been updated here. And if I go to here, the information has been updated here as well. So it's all in place, all updated, and all linked. Now, the best thing about that is obviously I've got two different drawings there, but I'm linking the information so that whoever is going to construct this circuit knows where things are and know what relates to everything else. That's the benefit of these projects and linking the information together. Those cross-references are very important, obviously, because you want to make sure that the circuit is connected properly. You may get the instance where you're inserting schematic symbols and contacts where you overload the system. So you might insert too many contacts for our relay coil that actually has only two normally open contacts. So what might happen? I'm in the IEC parent symbols drawing again. If I go back here to the icon menu and I go to relay contacts and go for a relay normally open contact like so. And I'm going to place that there in the parent symbols drawing. And what I'm going to do is go to project SS like before. Project again here, EX like before. And then I need project again here. And I go for KF2 for the system enabled there. That one there, SS. EX KF2. As soon as I click on OK, it'll alert me that I've exceeded the contact count value that is carried on the parent component. Obviously, because I'm trying to add a third contact to a relay coil that only has two contacts. You can see the two contacts there. Look, K2, K1. There's the only two contacts available. And I've already inserted one contact up here and one on the power one phase drawing. So if I OK that now, it takes me back to the insert edit child component dialog box to allow me to change my settings. Now I can't change my settings in this case. I'm not too worried either. I'm just demonstrating that alert that you may get there. So I just cancel that and we're back to our drawing again. So be very aware that AutoCAD Electrical works in the background, allowing you to work these things out. You don't have to do them in your head. If you overload a two contact symbol, like my relay coil, it'll tell you when you try to insert that third contact and link it to the same relay coil in the same project. It's a very, very handy feature. Stops you making mistakes. It removes that manual component to any electrical drawing by allowing you to automate what you're working with.